stream, and I have a super, super special guest to present to you today. This gentleman is the CMO of Plato Farm, just recently got listed on Hubie Global. I'm really excited to chat with this gentleman and ask him some questions about the project. Without any further ado, Mr. Dan Magic, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Brad. Hey, Infinite Crypto. Hey, Hobby. Um, thanks so much for having me here today. Really appreciate it. Man, it's our pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, great. Having a, having a good weekend? Oh, so far, so good. Beautiful Sunday morning. So, um, yeah, uh, we obviously listed on Hobby on, uh, I think, Friday or two, two, three days ago. Friday. So, yeah, we're, we're glad. Been a great weekend for us, I think. Awesome, fantastic. So just to give our viewers a little bit of a, a little bit of background, what exactly is Plato Farm? Yeah, uh, thanks, Brad. So Plato Farm really is a metaverse farming game. So what that essentially means is um, it, it's actually the, the word the word Plato Farm or the name of the game actually came from the philosopher Plato, who in his book called The Republic, designed this world of like of a utopia where players, uh, we, we, he wanted to recreate this utopia of the real world, where essentially players are, or, or people are given the reward proportionate to what they actually, the production value that they put in. Um, and that's what we've recreated in Plato Farm. We've recreated that, but in a gaming world. We wanted to recreate the development of society according to Plato's utopia. So what this means is that players that join the game get a, a piece of farmland. They then actually have to start paying for seeds within the game and planting these seeds on their farmland and, and actually harvesting the seeds. Through these seeds being harvested, they actually grow assets such as um, crops or um, carrots or wheat or whatever the case may be and go sell these on the, on the open market and start generating an income for themselves. Through generating an income that, uh, for themselves, they can actually start purchasing more productive assets such as cows or chickens or sheds and um, and slowly but surely, these players are able to develop their farms into bigger and bigger farms. They're able to join alliances with other players within the game and actually create um, big cities or metropolises within the game. And we're actually modeling this all the way from the historic society of farmland into the future, which is cities. Um, and and that's, that's what we're looking to create with this metaverse game. Awesome. Um, yeah, and I briefly touched on it, but it's a play-to-earn game, obviously. Um, right. Players do join the game for free and uh, complete a variety of tasks to actually get going. And thereafter, they, um, they, they, they it becomes play-to-earn. Awesome. I love the sound of that. So many games these days can cost anywhere from you know a few hundred to several thousand dollars just to get started. And if you're really looking to, you know, help a community, help people to, you know, make some extra money and to, you know, better their lives, it's uh, it's great that they can get started, you know, for free or, or very close to it. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. Now, I noticed, yeah. you know, one of the things that you talked about or, you know, even in the thumbnail, it mentioned um, in an AMA that you did recently, well, you know, why Plato Farm was a sustainable, you know, ecology. So do you want to... Mm -hmm touch on that a little bit of the sustainability mm -hmm. and how you guys have planned for the longevity of the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so we have some very interesting, um, uh, some very interesting tokenomics to look at here, which, which have been developed by our, our players, which actually differentiate us from quite a lot of our competitors. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to share my screen for a quick moment here. Um, just give me a second. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. So if we just look here, um, what our economic model looks like, and, and this, this just helps with the, as you mentioned, the longevity of, um, of exactly what we, uh, of, of how, how we want to move this game going forward. Essentially, the, the, there's two types of tokens within the game. There's what's called the Mark token, and it's what's called the Plato token. Now, okay. Plato token is what was listed on Huobi um, on Friday. Um, but specifically here, we'll, we'll be going a lot more into the mark token. So the way that the game works is there's a billion mark released every single day. However, this, this is released on the hour. And it, it actually works on an exchange rate with what's called GMark. So if there's more players earning profits within the game, that billion mark gets divided 
um, by more players into less GMAT per players. Or if there's less players in the game, for example, say there were only 10 players, they could earn up to like 100 million GMAT each. Then, then this GMAT is converted into MARC token. So there's, there's an exchange rate. And that exchange rate changes every single hour, um, which, which is quite a unique mechanism within the game. Secondly, um, the GMAT token is... Um, when the players so players purchase NFTs with the play, with the mark token. However, there's also when they when they sell this these NFTs back, there's a 25% tax or 25% transaction fee, which gets allocated to the DAO governance, which um, essentially gets burned out of the gameplay. So so that 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 sort of create creates a deflationary cycle. Um, this is what I mentioned to you earlier that there's a billion mark every day, which is about 40 million mark per hour. And 80 million in the last hour of the game. Um, when when the hourly mark is used up, and, and players can actually go and read this for themselves, participants cannot use the transfer service within this hour. So this is what kind of keeps this exchange rate going. Um, and and yeah, that, that's it to a large degree. So so there's two mechanisms in place. So it's firstly the 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 transaction tax, which gets taken, which is 25%, and secondly is this adjusted ratio of mark to g mark which which continually adjusts throughout the game and that's what keeps a deflationary cycle um and i know i haven't actually got into yet what the mark token purchases and what the plato token purchases so uh, we can get into that too if, if you'd like yeah absolutely that was that sounds like a great place to go to next yeah so um so essentially the, the the mark token as mentioned here is used to buy farm tools paint wood etc and livestock um, and, and then, as mentioned, 25% of that gets burned. Whereas on the other side, the Plato token, which is almost seen as it's, it's the more valuable token within the game. And that's what players' reputation depends on. So whereas um, the Mark token is used to purchase these more, um, it's, it's used for the basic currency within the game in terms of buying and selling. It's the Plato token, which allows players to actually level up and start getting these more productive assets and as you can see, here's, here's the price um, of these productive assets within the game um, in, in terms of Plato token. And once players start purchasing this, they can actually start leveling up at a more rapid rate. Awesome. Um, okay. Yeah. So if somebody, if somebody builds up their mark token, are they able to transition the mark into the Plato or do they have to sell the mark token on an exchange and then go buy Plato tokens? How does that work? Yeah. So... So, so, the, so the two are kept are kept very separately. So, Mark, the, the Play-Doh token will have to get bought through our through our in-game wallet, which is it all happens in game. So it's load up USDT and purchase some Play-Doh tokens within the game. Um, then through that through that they they start acquiring this Play-Doh token. Now the way that we look at this is the Play-Doh token is almost seen as a fixed asset. You purchase like, just like you would purchase, for example, a house and that house maintains itself. For example, the cow shed or the pig house. Whereas the, the mark token on the other side is almost seen as um, uh, consumables, which get used up. For example, you may purchase a, um, uh, a shovel, but this shovel gets used up. It will maybe have two or three uses in it, the shovel. Um, and that that's another mechanism which looks at creating a deflationary environment. So it's not there's not too much um, mark token being a, accumulated in the open market. It's like you you can sell the shovel, but most likely you also need to use up some shovels, for example. Um, yeah. So okay. so so no, the, the two tokens are kept very separately and have very separate uses. Awesome. Is the is the game all ready to go? Are people playing it today? Is it still in its beta? What mm -hmm. is what is you know like if somebody wanted to go jump on and start playing the game, mm -hmm. how do they get there? Yeah, so thanks. That's a, that's a good question. So the game has gone through a number of iterations. I think it. I think we launched our our alpha version in around September last year, and this is on the Apple um, iOS store as well as the Android store, and um, and and. Users can find the download links for that through platofarm.game, which is our website. And so we went from the alpha version, we had a gamma version, a beta and a gamma. And yeah, currently I think we're in V1 of the game, um, which is available on, on iOS and Android still. And yeah, we, we've got a very thriving community. I think we've got, once again, on our website, platofarm.game, you can see our on-chain statistics. 
So you, I think we've got about 12,000 daily active users at the moment. Um, you can see our on-chain um, NFT statistics. I think um, we've had, on a number of different days, we've had the, the most um, number of transactions on Heco Chain out of all um, out of all games or all uh, protocols on, on the Heco Chain. So we're, we're quite proud of that achievement. We've had that a number of times. So yeah, so it's, uh, it's live, players can play. We've got a thriving community. The community is always asking for when the next update is, um, which we're, we're expecting a, a, on the 10th of May there or thereabout um, to, to be V2 of the game. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been going very well. Awesome. Yeah. Now, you, met, you mentioned Heco Chain, and I wanted to touch on that a little bit. You know, I've mm -hmm. been hearing more and more about Heco Chain. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, you want to tell the folks, the viewers that maybe haven't heard of Heco Chain or don't know exactly what it is, a little bit more about it and why you chose to launch the game on the mm -hmm. Heco Chain? Mm -hmm. Of course. So, so Heco Chain is, it's a fast cheap um scaling solution essentially that and, and that's that's a fast protocol now obviously we have a lot of um nfts within the game and we needed we needed just a quick protocol to to um launch this on so that that was our first that was our first reason now, secondly hobby um hobby and heco are um the same very much interrelated and hobby has been been helping us to with this game from the beginning so hobby's just been a, an early partner with us and and we felt right to launch on on their chain and actually bring users over onto their chain. Um, we've seen that we've we've seen a number of of users move over from different blockchains onto the Heco chain just for the Plato Farm game, which has also been interesting. So it's almost like a, a symbiotic relationship. Hobby's helped us to to launch to to attract amazing partners, to attract amazing community, amazing strong community, and we're helping them to bring users over onto the Heco chain. And um, we've also it's also on the OEC chain. Um, which is another blockchain which users may know about. Um, yeah, and, and obviously we're hoping for the for the game to be multi-chain in the future. But we almost look at Heco Chain as our home chain for now, just as like a base to expand off. Awesome. Awesome. And you know, one of the things that we all know is so important when it comes to cryptocurrencies and comes to these um, you know, metaverses and play to earn games is community, which you mentioned earlier. And, you know, mm. so important. And you guys have an amazing community from what I've seen so far, you know, being able to get into, you know, the, the Discord. Do you guys have a Discord group? Do you have mm. a, a link to that handy by any chance? Yeah, we, we do. So we've got all our links handy. Um, we've got a very thriving community. I think we've got like over 70,000 people on Twitter, over 100,000 on Telegram or so. Um, I'm not, I, I can check our Discord numbers for you, but awesome. yeah, we, we've we've got a good hundred, hundred and fifty thousand um, very strong community members who are always like, as mentioned, always waiting for the new upgrade, very engaged with each other, always looking to help the community. And I think that that's the big thing within the game is we want, actually want to facilitate these alliances amongst players. We want players to 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 join their farms together to develop the future of the game together. Um, yeah, so so happy to share those links. Would you like me to send them to you now or, or after the? Yeah, or after, after, after the show is is great, folks. So for those cool. of you that are viewing live and those of you that watch this video later, you know it's probably one of the number one things that you can do is go get involved in the community. Um, whenever we do a video like this, there's a lot of questions that are left unanswered because we can only go through so much. But if you get involved in the community, from what I've seen, they're super helpful. You know, you can get in there, you can ask your questions. If you're having any technical issues, you know, somebody will help you. And, uh, you know, for, for getting started, I actually haven't been able to go create an account and play the game yet. I'm looking forward to. I don't know if you knew it or not, uh, Dan, but I broke my leg a few mm. days ago. Mm -hmm. So I haven't, uh, I've been, I've been uh, kind of nursing, nursing that along. I'm not in my normal studio. I'm kind of downstairs right now because I don't want to be going upstairs with it. Um, so I haven't had an opportunity to actually get in and play the game. Um, but I wanted to kind of go back to that. So if somebody was watching this and thinks, hey, man, I'd like to go get an account started, create, you know, and, and start playing this game. What is the website that they go to? Is there anything that they have to download? Or is it just a simple website and they create an account? Mm -hmm. yeah thanks so so brad yeah actually the amazing thing about the game is you don't need your legs to play the game because it's all online <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> no, so so in order to play the game, um, yeah, check out our website, PlatoFarm.game. Um and and all the links can be found there. It's it's uh yeah. yes, the the iOS download link, the Android link is there. Um also I, I think a question which is often asked is is what differentiates us from our competitors, what differentiates us from uh some of the other metaverse farming games specifically. And I think that which which leads me into how easy it is to actually play our game. Um we've got I think we, we've got essentially three main differentiators that I would look at. Essentially, it's the tech. It's the community and the partnerships, and it's our UI UX. So in terms of the tech, um, so easy to play. It's download the game. We have a wallet incorporated in our game. So what that means, it's load up your USDT within your in-game wallet. No need to connect to a third-party wallet. And then just start trading. You can buy your seeds or your crops directly within the game. The swap systems within the game. There's a mining system within the game. Everything's within the game. No need to connect to third-party sites. Um, so, so that makes it just very, very um, easy to onboard. Um, just download and play. Um, I think that the second main differentiator is our uh, our partners and our, our our marketing channels and our community, where we've just had very strong partners the whole way through, all the way from our um, early stages when we were raising when we were raising funds to develop the game, all the way through until listing um, on Friday. We through uh, we 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 launched with a public sale on TokenSoft. We've been supported by obviously Hobby Ventures, um, OKX Block Dreams, OP Crypto, um, uh, and a number of, of very, very um, strong investors and partners. And these partners have helped to push on our game, to grow our community, to develop in the resources. Um, so that's our, our next big differentiator. And then lastly, it's just our simple UX UI. Um, we've seen we've seen people like I, I've seen my younger brother who's ten years old download the game and actually just start playing it immediately. And within a few hours, he's just like, he's just hooked because, because it's just so simple. Um, so yeah, so I'd say that's, that's really our, what keeps us separate from, from a lot of our competitors. That's awesome, man. It's so powerful. I've got a 15 year old son and I'm excited to see his enthusiasm involved around the crypto uh, market. You know, he loves to play video games and so being able to incorporate something that these younger folks love to do and then to help them make money doing it, um, you know, is just is amazing. And I think mm -hmm. it's one of the reasons why, you know, it's just a tidal wave of, you know, adoption, you know, that is coming. So you want to touch on that just a little bit? You know, there's a lot of people that are fairly new to the metaverse and just mm -hmm. to the whole idea of this in, in the first place? Can you just tell us a little bit about mm. why you're so excited about the metaverse and what you potential, you know, the potential that you see for it over the next 5, 10, 15 years? Mm -hmm. Of course. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's, it's without a doubt the future. I mean, if we just look at the advancing rate of, of, of where things are going and you just project that forward. I mean, we look, I don't know, when, when did the, the iPhone came out as the first smartphone came out only like 14 years ago and now our phones are essentially an extension of ourselves you know it's like we're pretty much connected to it it's always in our hand and it's like it's an extension of your brain and and slowly but surely these things are going to just get more and more um, incorporated within us so it's like now we look at the, the progressions that they're making with ar and vr and um, as well as the connections that that um, some big companies are making to the human brain. And it's just like, we're getting more and more synced into computers. So many people are um, just with their screens the whole time. We look at the increase in gaming communities, the increase in um, just chat communities, such as Discord on its own, um, and how people are, people and their, and, and their screens or their computers are, are almost one and the same. And I think that merge is coming closer and closer. But now if you take that a step further, and you say, well, what about like economic incentives? Like, how does that work within? Like, we've only seen the beginning of play to earn games, but in the future, it's like people will actually be able to start earning a large percentage of their income from online services, which we're, we're already seeing. And I think over time, if we look at the next 15 years, like so the iPhone came out 15 years ago, where's the next 15 years going to take us? I think we're on the advancing exponential, um, the, the accelerating exponential curve at this point. So, so yeah, so, so what that means for me, what, what I think that means is we're just going to start living within our computers. Now, that, for those who don't know what the metaverse is, it's, it's all, we will own assets within the metaverse. We'll be able to 
choose our clothes, choose our outfits. We'll be able to make friends in the metaverse, have jobs in the metaverse. Um, and, and the metaverse, uh, meta actually just means to transcend. So metaverse is like transcending the universe into a new realm. Um, and I think there's going to be a variety of different metaverses. Plato Farm is going to be definitely one of them. Um, but there's, there's going to be a variety of other ones. And maybe at some point we'll start seeing a lot of interoperability between metaverses. Maybe there'll be a point where you can sell your um, some of your farmland or some of your assets from Plato Farm into a new metaverse, such as Roblox or Decentraland. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think very exciting things to come in the metaverse. Where it's going to go exactly, I think, is hard to predict. But right now, um, there's a lot of people experimenting. And I think some of the experiments are going to break through the, the boundaries of the frontiers of where we are, and some are going to fail. Um, so I think, I think it's just very exciting. I think, I think it's just important that people keep an open mind and people are open to the experiments. And on the other side, that um, uh, uh, companies or DAOs such as Plato Farm keep uh, pushing the frontiers and keep experimenting. Awesome, man. What an amazing perspective. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Can you imagine your 10-year-old brother never needing to have a job because mm -hmm. he started playing Plato Farm and by the time mm -hmm. he's an adult, he's mm -hmm. multimillionaire? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable, uh, you mm -hmm. know, what can happen with these mm -hmm. metaverses and with, uh, you know, just with the cryptocurrency and blockchain, um, you know, in a whole. So, mm -hmm. well, man, I really appreciate our time together. It was great. Yeah. Uh, you know, getting an opportunity to share this with the community, um, yeah. you know, for the, for people that are out there watching, make sure you go to Plato farm dot game, Plato farm dot game to uh, check out the game and play it. And folks definitely go check out Hubi global. You know, the Hubi global exchange is one of the top exchanges, if not the number one exchange in the world. They've been backing this game since the very beginning. Uh, we appreciate them. I love being on the Hubi live stream like we are this morning. I want to thank them so much for having us. And, you know, before we before we go enjoy our Sunday morning coffee and, and enjoy the rest of the day, is there anything else that you would like to, to touch on? Uh, anything that I forgot to ask you about that's important that you would like to uh, maybe share with the viewers? Yeah, well, that, yeah, thanks again for having me here, Brad. I think, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, check out Hobby, Hobby.com. Um, the Play-Doh token is listed currently. Um, and yeah, we, we're, we're excited about the prospects of the game. The team has been amazing. I've, I've been part of the team for, for quite a long period of time now. And I, the, for me, that's been one of the strongest things is, is actually working with the team, seeing how dedicated they are to this project. Um, yeah, it's been it's been really a, a great experience. So so thank you and and thank you to to our community that's that's watching this and that's supported us throughout the throughout our journey. It's been, as you can imagine, a, a very interesting journey. Some ups, some downs, but Plato Farm is we're we're a thriving community. We support each other, and that's that's what we look to do going forward. Awesome, man. Well, I definitely am going to go get it. Uh, get go to PlatoFarm.game and get account created and start playing it myself. And I look forward the next time we get together, I'll be able to pull up my farm and show you the progress that I've made. Cool. I look forward to that, Brad. Friend, add me as a friend on the game. I'll send you my details. Yeah. yeah. How do you do that? I, I love the social aspect of that. Yeah. How do you add people as friends on the game? So that's that's all within the game system. Super okay. easy. You'll find it. I, I have okay. No doubt. Yeah. Awesome, man. I look forward to it. All right, right, folks. Well, well, with that, I will let everybody go enjoy the, the rest of their day. Thank you all so much for being here. Once again, thank you, Ubi Live, for having us. And uh, with that, God bless, and we'll, we'll see you again soon. Take care. See you. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.